Hey folks, Chuck Holton here. I'm still in Kyiv. Uh, as you can probably hear, the uh, air raid sirens are going off in the background. This happens a couple of times a day. Uh, Russia, whenever they shoot a missile into Ukraine, of course, nobody knows right away where it's going. And so they sort of issue a, an air raid siren, blanket air raid for most of the country or maybe all the country. And so then we're under an air raid alert and we're supposed to go to the shelters um, uh, and what stay there for several hours until they figure out where, where the thing is going. Uh, fortunately, Ukraine has done such a good job at shooting down the missiles and drones over the last several days. Uh, they've had very little uh, effect across the country. They've been aiming for the um, system of power, water, light, electricity, gas, stuff like that, uh, all around the country. They've degraded the power infrastructure in Ukraine uh, by about 30 or 40 percent. And so that means that we have rolling blackouts. Our power was out this morning for a couple of hours here in Kyiv. Um, it's not much of an inconvenience and people are working very hard to uh, sort of back off on their power usage. I know we are uh, at sort of give the Ukrainian uh, teams that are trying to fix the power infrastructure uh, the chance to you know fix things and uh, get them back up and running uh, the bottom line is uh, we've still got power we've still got heat we've still got internet and um, so we can't complain too much there are a lot of people around this country out in the villages that don't have those things uh, because of these attacks Russia has realized that if they try to attack Kyiv it's more likely that their missiles will get shot down so they go after the less protected uh, substations out around the country. Now, I want to talk today about uh, something that probably a lot of people in the United States don't know a whole lot about, and that's the Russian Orthodox Church. How much do you know about the Russian Orthodox Church? And specifically, its uh, leader, his name is Patriarch Kirill, uh, an old looking guy here. And we, we hear about him in the news from time to time. Uh, recently, most recently, he's made the news because as Russia has started this conscription process of drafting up to, well, they say up to 300,000 troops, it's probably more like a million. Uh, the first time since World War II that they've done that for a war. Uh, they did do a conscription for uh, the Chernobyl disaster um, and uh, it's same same kind of thing then they sent the thousands of young men to their deaths here uh, it seems like from what we're hearing out of Russia that the average life expectancy of one of these kids that gets called up in Russia is uh, just over a week once he gets inside Ukraine he's dead within a week uh, that's really sad and that means the body bags are really piling up inside Russia right now uh, as a matter of fact, yesterday they had almost 500 Russians killed in one day. Uh, that's, that's pretty painful, I would think. And um, you wonder how long Russia can keep that up. I know they have a lot of people, but will the people stand for it? We are hearing rumblings that some of the oligarchs that were uh, behind the war, specifically the one who owns the Wagner Group, uh, have been uh, challenging Vladimir Putin on his uh, handling of the war because it has not gone well for Russia. When it comes to their tanks, it looks like they've lost about a half of their total tank, uh, active tank force that they had before the war. Uh, that's a lot. That's a lot of tanks. And many of those are now in Ukraine being used by Ukrainians against Russia. So not only have they lost them, but the, Ukraine has gained them, and that's doubly bad for Russia. Uh, they have something like six to 10,000 tanks in storage, uh, but these are older tanks, and they haven't been maintained. Uh, they've been sitting out in the weather for 30, 40 years in some cases. Uh, so anything that's rubber on those things is going to be dry rotted. Uh, they're going to have to be uh, it, you know, worked on to get them moving at all. And uh, the Ukrainians have gotten very, very good at killing those things if they do manage to get them into this country. Um, Ukraine now has more soldiers on the battlefield than Russia does, and things are not looking good for Russia. Let's go back to the Russian Orthodox Church then. Patriarch Kirill uh, said in a, a sermon recently that if you 
go and fight in Ukraine and die there, that uh, dying in Ukraine will absolve you of all your sins. You can have your sins forgiven, not by accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, not by giving your life to Christ, not by, uh, you know, faith alone in Christ alone, as the Bible says very clearly, but by dying for your country in Ukraine. Now, this is completely antithetical to Christianity. Uh, Christianity is not about dying the right way because all the dying has already been done for us. Christianity is about accepting the free gift of Christ's death on the cross and uh, paying for my sins already and just accepting that and by accepting it, then I receive that gift of eternal life. That's what Christianity is all about. That's the fundamentals of the faith of Christianity, whether you're an Orthodox or an Evangelical, it doesn't matter. That's what Christianity is. At its most basic precept, Christianity is only receiving eternal life, not by how you live, and not by how you die, but by whose life and whose death you accept in place of your own. So Commander Kirill could, be not, could not be more wrong when he says that you can be absolved of your sins by going and dying in Ukraine. But let's, let's look a little bit deeper into, into, I keep calling him Commander Kirill. He kind of is a commander, uh, the patriarch of the uh, Russian Orthodox faith. And I say that because uh, many uh, of the clergy in the Russian Orthodox Church are also uh, members of the Russian government. Uh, in fact, the now this I learned this just the other day from a, a guy uh, that's about my age here in Ukraine who lived, grew up in the Soviet Union, and he said, "You don't understand that once the Soviet Union took over, all of the church's uh, clergy were replaced by KGB." And so the clergy, the people who were hearing your confessions or were giving your uh, sacraments or were, were uh, you know, whatever, uh, doing the things that the, the clergy does in the church, those people reported directly to the government. They were all members of the KGB. Well, that has not changed inside Russia. And uh, Patriarch Kirill is, uh, was a KGB agent and is still an asset of the Russian government, specifically reporting to Vladimir Putin. And his job is uh, to lead the faithful, to support their government uh, in every way, shape, and form, no matter how stupid or bad that government is, no matter how corrupt that government is. And, and you want a picture of how corrupt the Russian Orthodox Church is, Back in 1997, there was a series of articles written by an investigative journalist about how the Russian government had granted to the Russian Orthodox Church uh, a tax concession. So like, uh, you know, they, they're uh, tax exempt like churches are in the United States. But they were using that tax exemption to import cigarettes into Russia and sell them for their own profit. And so uh, at one point, in, in, at, at that time, they estimated that the Russian Orthodox Church controlled about 7% of all of the tobacco sales inside Russia. That's interesting because Russian Orthodox, uh, you know, their, their uh, ideology says that smoking is a sin. But yet they were making billions of dollars off of selling cigarettes uh, tax-free inside of Russia. And that's one of the reasons why guys like uh, Patriarch Kirill uh, wear, uh, are seen wearing $30,000 watches when uh, the people of their country don't make uh, $30,000 a year on average. So uh, that's why most of the new churches that are being built in Russia are built in very wealthy areas. Um, it, it's an extremely corrupt organization and it, it serves not God, but the state. It serves mammon and man, not, the, not God uh, of the universe. And so it is a, a sham of a, a church. To call it a, a Christian church would be like calling Packer Stadium a Christian uh, venue 
because there are Christians in it once in a while. I'm not saying that, uh, what I mean is not all of the people who attend the Russian Orthodox Church are, uh, you know, dis uh, unbelievers. There are probably lots of people who are legit Christians who have read their Bible, who believe in Christ, who, have, who understand the tenets of the Christian faith, who attend the Russian Orthodox Church. But the leader of the Russian Orthodox Church himself is pushing an ideology that is directly contrary to, to, to Catholic, Christian, or Orthodox, or Evangelical faith, of any, any kind of Christian faith you want to name. So uh, that's all I've got for today. I wanted to point that out, and um, I wanted to show you this piece about uh, Patriarch Kirill uh, that was done on CBN back toward the beginning of the war. Take a look. A close ally of Putin, Kirill continues to preach that Russian believers should support the war in Ukraine as a holy mission. This dates back around 10 years ago, at the beginning of Putin's third term. Patriarch Kirill, the head of the Russian Orthodox Church, um, began working in tandem with Putin, it, kind of having the Russian Orthodox Church operate as a form of soft power for Putin in the region. Earlier this month, Kirill delivered a sermon to Russian military leaders in a cathedral dedicated to Russia's armed forces. According to a report from Religion Dispatches, the Patriarch referred to a version of history that sees no distinction between Russia and Ukraine, essentially not recognizing Ukraine's existence as an independent nation, and did not even recognize Ukrainians as a separate people by referring to all involved in the conflict as holy Russians. Kirill has preached that it is God's truth that the people of Russia, Ukraine, and Belarus should be reunited as one spiritual people. This is Putin's doctrine of Ruski Mir, or Russian world, which holds that ancient Russia must be reunited and Moscow has the right to dominate its neighbors. Kirill started preaching a ideology, this idea of a Russian world, or particularly a holy Rus, this sort of transnational Russian sphere of civilization that included Russia, Ukraine, Belarus, and some other parts of Eastern Europe, um, and where the idea would be that Moscow was the political center and while Vladimir Putin was a Soviet KGB agent, records from the Cold War revealed Patriarch Kirill was a KGB spy during Soviet times. Kirill has described Putin's leadership of Russia as a religious miracle. While Putin critic Mikhail Khodorkovsky says Putin sees for himself a prospect of being kind of a messiah, a person who unites the whole Russian-speaking world. And for Patriarch Kirill, Vladimir Putin is God's instrument to fight against the decadent West. Dale Hurd, CBN News. All right, folks, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. I'm Chuck Holton. We'll see you next time. Go to chuckholton.locals.com if you want to support us. Bye.